Hello, my name is Mark Smith, and welcome to our series on getting started with inductive position sensors. This is video number three discussing how to auto calibrate your sensor with externally collected data, creating fault indicator zones so your host processor can detect, can tell when and detect when that sensor is in a fault condition, and reversing sensor slopes. So to start out this, I have a water, a water sensor that's using a linear sensor that's on my desktop today. And there is a float that is floating up and down at the water level. And I've been collecting data on this this sensor and collect and storing it in an Excel uh, spreadsheet, which I'll show up on the screen. It's actually up there right now. And what I was doing is for every half a cup, and this is half a cup, I would pour this into the water tank and then I would read the output of the sensor. The sensor is on this side, outside of the um, chamber there, and the float is on this side. And I was going to record that information with the scent protocol. In fact, if you look up here on the screen, I'll move this over. You can see I collected um, from zero to nine and a half cups and the scent went from zero all the way to 4095, actually very, very close to the very, very end. So we're going to use this to auto calibrate with the IPCE tool. So in the analysis tab, there is a load button, but we got to load up and put this file into a, no, a template that can be read by the IPC tool. And that template is over here under the IPC directory. If you go to data log templates, you go to this new format bench with EEPROM, and I'm using a 3302A, and you'll see that there's a template for sent data. So let's pull that up. And okay, so I have a template there. And the three things I need to do is I need to take my measured values, zero to nine and a half cups, and put them into the position column here in this template. Okay, I will make this bigger so you can see that. And then also, then we take our sent data, which is shown right here, and I'm going to put that over into the sent column, which is shown right there. Okay, and then the next thing you do, the final thing you have to do is determine the start position and end position range of your data. And since this only goes to nine and a half cups, it goes from zero to nine and a half cups and you're set. Each of the other templates for analog and PWM are very similar, although they have the start position SP and EP are um, defined differently. And you'll see those templates in this data log template file, which is shown there. So it can be done for any format of externally collected data that you're using. In this case, let's go ahead and save this. I'll save this, but I have it saved already. So I'm, I'm just going to cancel out of that. And I've already done that. And let's go back to the bench data. And I put it into this template here. Um, so let's go ahead and load that file up. And we go to the bench data and there's load it with the template and you load the bench data. And then it asks you if you took this data using the IPC software. In our case, we did not take it. I, we took this data externally with an Excel file and are loading it into this analysis tab. If you did take it with the IPC software, it will also keep track of the calibration points that you used or the EEPROM values that you used when you took the data. In this case, we're taking it externally. And so now we're going to have to load those EEPROM values into the system in addition to the data points. So we, when you click no here, what it's going to do is ask you what type of EEPROM values did you take when you took the measurements? We're using the default value. In this case, you would hit yes. In our case, we were not. I was, and when I took the data, I was using another set of calibration points that I had saved. And I'm going to hit no here. And I'm going to load those calibration points that I used when I measured the sensor and I'm going to load it up there. And so here's the data up here. And um, my start position started at zero and went up to nine and a half uh, cups. And I'm looking at I'm looking at output values from 409 to 3686, at least from default value that came in here. You can see the data. So now what I want to do is I want to adjust it. I know that this is pretty flat in this region here. And it's right around two cups, then it starts to go up. And so I'm going to say that I want my sensor to work 
and be operating at three cups. Below three cups, effectively, the sensor will detect that the tank, in this case, is very low. Okay, and so I changed that. Now the other area is up at five, at nine and a half volts, I'm right at the peak. And I wanna add a little bit of margin in here. So I'm gonna put this up at nine volts at that point. And then I'm gonna calibrate this value like this. Now at nine volts, I want the output to be 3,900 at that value. And at three volts, at three cups, I want the value to be 409. Okay, so I hit the auto calibration button. After calibrating, we're gonna set the H clamp and L clamp regions. H clamp means the, where high clamp is, anything above this value gets clamped. Anything, and then the low clamp is, is that no signal below this value will go below the low clamp level. And so above uh, 900, I'm going to put a clamp region and uh, below um, and this below 409, I'm going to put another clamp region here. And so now you can see that um, anything below this value will be clamped. Anything above the value is clamped there. Now this sets up an opportunity, to, and the, these are called fault indicator zones. So if the sensor goes into a fault mode, we will output either a zero or a high value, and those then will indicate a fault. And that information, I've mentioned it in a previous um, video, but that information is this diagnostic flag. And right now, this sensor is set so that when a fault occurs, it would be zero. And in a future video, we'll talk about the types of faults that you can detect with our sensor. So we're ready, we're set here, it's been calibrated. You can see my LSB is 10 LSB, so quite good. And then what I'll do is I'll update the IC settings at this point. Now I don't have any programmer, this is, nothing's attached here. I'm just using the IPC tool to do the calibration. At this point, so you'll see a bunch of red values here. Just go ahead and save that value. And then this would be the measured value. Instead of the measured value, this would be the calibrated values, okay? So this is the calibrated EPROMs that will optimize the accuracy of this linear sensor for using the IPC tool and externally collected data. So that's all set. You're, you're done in how to do externally collected data. We've talked about kind of your fault indicator zones that anything, if a fault does occur, this sensor will output something at zero. So your host processor can easily detect when there's a fault. If it's, if it's below this value of 409, uh, that was the clamp value for the scent, then we know we're in a fault condition. The accuracy of our sensor was quite good, uh, minus 10 LSB. But if I was looking to do even greater accuracy, or I had a sensor that was not quite as accurate after we did the auto calibration routine, and I wanted to get even further on accuracy, better accuracy, there is another tool in our auto calibration engine down here where you can put in your desired accuracy. Let's say in this case, I wanted five LSB. In this case, the auto calibration engine will tell you how to get five LSB. In this case, you need 11 calibration points. And in our next video, we'll show how to take these 11 calibration points and along with some code, a use an external microcontroller by microchip to improve the accuracy of these sensors even further. Now let me talk about another case where let's say when you've collected data, you're gonna, you have a falling slope and that's can often happen. And we're going to go over to, and I've stored that over here in this template area, re reverse slope, okay? And I'm going to load up the, the default value, and you can actually see this is a reverse slope. How do you handle and auto calibrate this region? In this case, what you're going to do is you're going to have, we're going to go from zero to the end value of, this was, you know, collected data of 118 point eight. Um, value, that was the value there. I don't know what type of sensor it was. In this case, what you're going to do is let's do 3686. This is the high value, 3686. And then this is the low value, 409. So now you collected those. Now we have a negative slope as our guide. And now you can auto calibrate with that solution there. So that's how you reverse slopes using the IPC tool. If when you collect your data, you want to collect it in that reverse slope condition. 
Um, you, once again, once with you auto calibrate, you update the IC settings, you either program the chip or go ahead and save that value. Thank you very much for video number three discussing how to calibrate with externally collected data, creating fault indicator zones, and reversing sensor slopes.